This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Start your free trial today at www.squarespace.com slash second thought to get 10% off your first purchase. If you're lucky enough to live in an area with clear night skies, you've probably looked up in awe of the staggering scale of the universe. You've probably said something like, golly, isn't that super neat? Or maybe you've had to take the next hour to talk yourself down from an existential crisis. Regardless of your reaction to the sheer size of the visible universe, it's most likely prompted you to ask the question, are we alone? Remember that existential crisis? We're about to make it a whole lot worse. Those thousands of stars you can see on clear nights taking up the entirety of the sky are just a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the whole universe. On the clearest nights, we can see about 2,500 stars, each one measuring fewer than 1,000 light years from Earth. That's about 1% of the diameter of our home galaxy, the Milky Way. This picture illustrates just how tiny of a portion of our own galaxy we can see. To really emphasize how huge the universe is, take a look at this animation. Each light is a separate galaxy, and each of these galaxies contains roughly 100 to 400 billion stars. To put that in a tiny human perspective, that means for every grain of sand on every beach, seafloor, and swimsuit on Earth, there are 10,000 stars. And it makes you really wonder, with all those stars out there, the odds must be in the favor of some of them hosting life-supporting planets. So, where are all our intergalactic neighbors? This apparent contradiction between the lack of evidence and the high probability of extraterrestrial civilizations is the basis for what's called the Fermi Paradox. The paradox consists of several points. First, there are billions of stars in the galaxy that are similar to the Sun, many of which are billions of years older than Earth. Second, there is a high probability that some of these stars will have Earth-like planets, and if the Earth is typical, some might develop intelligent life. Third, some of these civilizations might develop interstellar travel, a step the Earth is investigating now. And finally, even at the slow pace of currently envisioned interstellar travel, the Milky Way galaxy could be completely traversed in a few million years. So essentially, the Fermi Paradox asserts that we should have some evidence of alien civilizations by now. Let's break it down a little. Earth is about four and a half billion years old. For the vast majority of that time, the planet was undergoing the long process of developing more and more advanced life forms. In the short span of time that modern humans have been in the picture, we've gone from stone tools to space stations, and we're on the brink of true interplanetary travel. Now consider a planet eight billion years old, of which there are surely many in our galaxy. If Earth is the standard for the development of advanced life forms, then an 8 billion year old planet would have technology three and a half billion years ahead of our own. Imagine going back in time with a smartphone and showing it to a Neanderthal. It would be completely incomprehensible to him. And that's only a difference measured in tens of thousands of years. A difference of billions of years would be unfathomable for even the greatest modern minds, and would surely include interplanetary and likely intergalactic travel. It's estimated that the entire Milky Way could be colonized by such an advanced civilization in under four million years. And yet we've never detected even the smallest shred of evidence for intelligence elsewhere in the galaxy. So where is everybody? There are many proposed solutions to the Fermi paradox, far too many to discuss in one video. But one solution stands out as uniquely terrifying. We know giant asteroids have incredible destructive power as ancient life learned the hard way. But that's nothing compared to the grim reaper of the cosmos. Enter gamma ray bursts, or GRBs. GRBs are unbelievably powerful beams of gamma rays released during a supernova or larger hypernova. These intensely focused beams are known to expel in a few seconds the amount of energy our sun will produce in its entire 10 billion year lifetime. That's an enormous amount, but what's equally impressive is their range. Most GRBs are detected at a distance measured in the billions of light years. Some are so powerful that even at that incredible distance, they can still be seen by the naked eye on a clear night. If one of these cosmic snipers were to set its sights on a life-harboring planet within a few thousand light years of its source, and the beam were to strike the planet directly, it would effectively eradicate all life on the unfortunate world. And it likely wouldn't only affect that one planet. Like a laser pointer aimed at a distant point, a GRB becomes less focused the farther it travels. A burst originating a few thousand light years away would be over a hundred light years wide by the time it reached its unfortunate victim and any neighboring planets. To put it in perspective, the distance from our sun to the very furthest reaches of our solar system is just under two light years. 
GRBs can effectively sterilize entire star systems in minutes. Since we've been able to reliably track GRBs, we've counted about one per day occurring somewhere in the universe. Of course, these all originate anywhere from millions to billions of light years away, so it's difficult to determine the true frequency of gamma ray bursts, but they happen often enough to cause some to speculate that they might be a solution to the Fermi paradox. As intelligence begins to develop elsewhere in the universe, it often gets zapped by these cosmic assassins, preventing any further development or colonization of other worlds. Perhaps life has been unlucky enough to always be in the wrong galactic neighborhood at the wrong time, and no civilization has yet escaped the wrath of gamma ray bursts. Others speculate that perhaps the universe has been subjected to the majority of these GRBs in past millennia, and only now are we beginning to enter a period of relative safety for organic life. We're still not sure, so all we can do for the moment is hope that some dying star hasn't set its sights on our solar system for its grand finale, and that maybe someday humanity can expand far enough into the void of space to avoid total extinction. Gamma ray bursts are just one of many proposed solutions to the Fermi paradox, so you can expect plenty more videos on the subject in the future. If there's a possibility you'd like to see explored in a future video, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to thank my amazing sponsor Squarespace for making this video possible. Squarespace is one of the easiest and sleekest website development tools out there. Some of the world's biggest companies, celebrities, and even your favorite YouTubers use Squarespace to create professional sites that are super simple to maintain. I'm actually in the process of building my own site with Squarespace, and I'll be sure to share that with you in a future video. Squarespace is offering my viewers 10% off your first purchase with them. Just go to squarespace.com slash second thought to sign up and start building your online presence. That's squarespace.com slash second thought to get started today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, follow Second Thought on your favorite social media, and let me know what you think about the Fermi Paradox as a whole in the comments. You can watch my other space-related videos by clicking here, or watch all my videos by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.